I've got another mega mailbag. I've got 11 packages here. Some big stuff, some small stuff. Some stuff for some repairs I'm going to be doing videos on soon. So stick around and see what we've got. Okay, first thing. We'll tackle one of the big ones first day. Eh? Sharpen ram knife. Hopefully it's a bit better today. I could use this knife, but, you know, no, no. Ram knife all the way. Probably should have cut a different side of the package, actually. Anyway, never mind. It's um, white PET-G filament. 1.75mm diameter it should be. Oh, I've got no idea what brand this is. I don't actually remember. Nothing on the spool that I can see. It's got QC scissors on it. Does that matter? So yeah, PETG, just white, 1.75mm, 1 kilo, 210 to 255 degrees C is recommended temperature for this material. I need some white PETG because I've only got white PLA. I wanted some PETG as well. So yeah, now I've got some. And now the thing I've decided, well, I was going to print with it, I've changed my mind on. So yeah. Mm. Next thing, ignore what I'm doing on the background here. A couple of lithium cells which I'm charging. These are reclaimed from a battery pack from a MacBook. I stripped down the battery pack. I don't recommend you do that. It's very dangerous. And I'm reclaiming the cells. I'm going to use them for something else. I might even use them on projects I've been building instead of using uh, 18250s like these because it's equivalent capacity. These in theory are well, these are 13. Point, um, 13.3 watt hours or something like that. And it works out as about 3,500 and something milliamp hours. Those could be good. Anyway, get the side This is a hot end assembly for a Ender 3 CR10, I think, something like that. I purchased this as, as a spare, right? So I already have an Ender 3, as you may have seen in my videos. If you haven't seen my 3D printing videos yet, make sure you go check them out. I've got a playlist of 3D printing videos. So that's a hot end from one. So th these are basically that's a cooling section here, which is why it's got the heat sink fins in there. Stop heat travelling up the pipe. That is the heating block, and that's the nozzle where the filament is extruded from. There's a little hole in the end of the nozzle there. I don't want nozzles on it. Doesn't really matter much. I'll change it probably. So we've got heating elements and a thermistor as well, which also go to the same block. So I've got this really as a spare. Um, what actually happened on, on my block, my existing one, which is still the factory one from Ender, right, the original Creality one, the insulation shroud came off the bottom of it. That came off, and strangely my prints actually got better. So I'm actually wondering if I should even put it back on again. Obviously it's to do with the cooling, with the, the fan going across and stuff like that. It seems to be working better. Obviously the external temperature is a bit cooler, the internal temperature will be working harder. I, I don't know, anyway. So this came with a little rubber boot as well. Silicon boot which goes over the nozzle area just to help insulate it, stop it from being affected by the fans. You want blowing across it to keep it warm, you know? So I've got a spare one now. I thought, well, if I ever get a problem and I'm trying to print something and it's urgent, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be stuck. So at least now I've got a spare head. Comes with the Teflon tube. And the Teflon tube is a restriction about what temperature you can print at. So you can't print hotter than the temperature melts at. Obviously I was, it'll melt. Oh, okay, right, yeah, now I'm whole bunch of these little oh, spare part I gave me an extra one thank you yes yeah, so those are 10 pin flat ribbon cable connectors so let's just show you this so you've got a 10 pin header effectively on the bottom you see that so you make a circuit ball with like a standard header footprint and then what you can do is you can put a ribbon cable straight onto it and just put it on and crimp it in and you don't have to do any soldering but no connectors you know fall out and that sort of stuff you can just crimp it in so I've got some of these for my projects thinking they might be a good way of saving myself a little bit of time. That should be anyway. Instead of having to do connectors and solder on the ball and then do a connector and, and it's just also more compact as well. It's much, you know, obviously it is much smaller than using a header and a connector at the same time. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. I recently gave away a gift to my Patreons to celebrate 10,000 subs. So I did one for my normal subscribers and also I did a second giveaway for my Patreons. So I gave away a multimeter. The thing I gave away to my patrons is of equivalent value to what I gave away to my general subscribers as well. So I gave away two things. If you want to support me, please check out my Patreon page. It'd be very much appreciated. Helps me buy things like mailbag. So I've got some more of these antennas. I've already shown this previously. 868 megahertz. There you go. 868. Just little short stable ones, five centimeters. Nice and compact. I've got a few of these already. I've been using them and they're working absolutely fine. But no problems with them, nice and compact, nice and out of the way. Now one thing I've decided though, is that on the item these go on, which I shall show you, 
they go on the back here like this, right? It sticks out the back. Now, I really actually want it like a 45 degree angle. So what I've also purchased recently, which I'm waiting to arrive now, is some 45 degree SMA adapters. So it'll come out the back, uh, 45 degrees come out the back. That way it's kind of vertical when it's on the desk. I don't like the fact it's not actually correctly polarized. You know, being horizontal polarization is not correct. It'll work a lot better if it's vertical, but I can't get it dead vertical because of the back of the case sticking out like that, as you can see. I might get a silhouette. So I'm actually going to put a 45 degree on there and that'll bring it up like this and that'll be a bit better. Hope I between the two is better than wrong. Right, what's in here? Otterbox Defender cases. Now these are hopefully real ones. They look the part. I've already got an Otterbox case. I've had mine for years. I've had Otterbox ever since I've had an iPhone basically. And they've been a really good case. And mine's getting a bit worn, so I thought it's time to re replenish it. Actually, I'll, I'll show you it. So here is my existing case, and you can see it's worn here. It's just starting to fall apart, that sort of stuff. It's just worn out, because that's where the clip goes for the back, for this holder here. It wears through there, so it looks like, I don't know, we'll see if this is much better. This looks different, actually. Now the question is, is this a real case, or is it a fake case? It looks the part. Otterbox do change things over time. I mean, I've probably got, I mean, it's got these moulding marks here. You can see these little lines, maybe. See that little line just down there and on this corner over here. These are moulding marks where they've got a undercuts inside the mould. So you've got inserts which move in and wrap around the part as it's being moulded. And the mould opens, those parts move out of the way. Those sorts of marks were probably worn on mine originally, but um, they've all worn off, I expect. Anyway, it looks the part, but is it real? <laughs> is it real? I don't know. It looks correct. It's a really good fit, which is what it's supposed to be. This was much cheaper than I mean, originally when I got this particular case here. I think it was something along the region of eighty or hundred dollars something like that for this case. These were about thirty or forty dollars locally, which is actually cheaper than you get them from Otterbox themselves. So make me a little bit suspicious. So either it's a really good copy, or someone's clearing out stock or something like that, or they're passing on their savings. This rubber feels a bit tougher than the original Otterbox ones. Mine's very very soft. This is much harder, it's a harder rubber. Now if this fits directly onto my existing case, it's probably fine. Let's have a look at this. I mean, I also bought a fake case for my wife for, I don't know, it's like $20 or like that. And it's been okay, but it's not wonderful. Let's just have a look at the inside of this and see if this matches up. It's just got the foam in there. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's definitely different. And it's got China marks in there. I don't know, I'm not convinced yet. Let's get my phone out my other case. Okay, so here's the rubber case of mine and the new one. Now, because this case is so old, this is, I don't know, is it three or four years old now, probably? Since this phone came out, it's a success. There could easily be differences in the moulding. But I'm seeing differences. They're very subtle, but there are very slight differences in the mouldings. So this isn't from exactly the same die. It's from a different mould, but it's almost identical. But it's extremely subtle. There's not much in it. Now, the actual logo markings in here are a little bit different as well. It just gives a dirt in my case, it's, so it's old and gets a bit of a hard life. Let's try and get these moulding marks in there show up. So you can see that says DEF Cavity 16. That's number 16, which means Cavity 16. And it says COM Cavity 4. Now, Cavity 4, don't worry about that too much. Okay, that just, you know, there could be 16 cavities and it happens to be Cavity 4, which came out. But there are differences. Day stamp on this one, so Monty, you can't read it anymore. This was made in 2014, this one, apparently. That's what they reckon. So we'll read this day stamp on this one, we'll clean it up a little bit. This is 2014 as well. I think this is a copy, but a really good one. So I fitted the rubber case onto my phone, which came with a new one on my existing case, and it fits perfectly. So either it isn't a proper Otterbox one, but it certainly is possible it's a real one. Sometimes it can be really hard to tell, but that fits perfectly. But the fact that it still says 2014 on a day stamp makes me wonder a little bit if it's just a copy. But it's so similar, it's really subtle. It could easily be that they said made multiple moulds to make the same thing. And it's, you know, a different one. Yeah, same year would have been the same mould. So, in fact, there's some moulding differences makes me wonder. You know, it seems a little bit suspicious. It fits in my case perfectly. And that's for the belt clip, which is also using my existing phone. I do have a belt clip. That fits in my original case perfectly. My cat's come in with one of them. Actually, it's my stepson's cat anyway. It's a bit annoying. It's very vocal. Also wet, because apparently it's raining. I better go shut the window. So here's my original belt clip here. And straight away, there's a, there's a difference. There's a texture difference. The new one is textured. There's a spark finish. This is a polish finish. The clips are different. The markings inside the logo are different. 
yeah, this, 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 these markings here are completely different. So what they've done is they put a lot of care into the phone holder and the phone case to make that a good copy and not worried about this part so much. Now you look at the back, this is texture on the back as well, spark finish, but the profiles are different. It's still got the same logo. The logos are slightly different. They're not identical, some slight differences in there. Date stamps, mine is 2014. This one doesn't give a year. That's only a month stamp. There's no year stamp on there. So it just says March. So the phone holder is fake, which means likely the rest of the case is also fake. So although this is a fake case, it is a really good one. I have to say, this is a good fake. You know, it could be a real Defender case. It could be a real one. But it seems odd that they would take away things like date stamps on moulds which already exist and remake that mould. I mean, moulds can get worn and then they replace them. But they would still keep the same things like date stamps with the, with the year in them. Like the year would be in the date stamp. That's a requirement for most manufacturing companies of any decent standard. Part of the ISO 9002 and stuff like that, 14001 codes. You have to have traceability. That would be a requirement. Uh, does it mention standards on here? It doesn't seem to. Just suspicious that these are really good fakes. So I think uh, if it is a fake, then it's still great. It's just very interesting. I probably waffle on about this enough. It's my plastic side coming out, isn't it? Show my plastics. Mm. So perhaps if you've got one of these cases, you've put, put one of these recently from Otterbox directly, and you know it's genuine, let me know if it had the same kinds of features as I've shown here. Because, I mean, these could be genuine cases. I'm just doubtful. So let me know. Actually, still charging 140 odd. That's because both of them got in parallel. Anyway, moving on. Got my 14 package. I think it's probably some momentary switches. I think that's what it is. I bought a bunch of them because I was in a hurry for them because I wanted to finish off my project to get it ready for the last event last weekend. And the ones I ordered from China hadn't arrived because of the delays. And um, so I ended up buying some from Element 14 and RS. These appear to be tactile switches according to the paperwork. These are quite special ones, these are long shaft. So these are through hole mount switches. Tactile momentary switches. Right, these have got a, I think it's 22mm shaft on them, something like that. What did I get? Six, two, no, hold on, two, four, six. I've got seven in there. I guess I've got an extra one. I'm not counting that wrong, am I? Yes, it's definitely seven. Weird. Oh no, okay, I know what it is. I ordered eight. They sent me seven. There's one on back order, so they're going to send me one switch, especially. <sighs> hmm. That's great for the environment, isn't it? RS components. It's probably some more switches. Oh no, these are parts I've ordered. That's right, okay. Yes. Excellent, even better. Okay. So these are parts I ordered to do some repairs. Let me go grab the things I want to show you. So, we've got some infrared LEDs in here. So it's all highest temperatures generated by the reflow. So yeah, okay. Don't melt them, yeah. Here's a SMA connector, so there's an SMA in there, long SMA. This one's a board edge mount, I think, is it? No, it's got four poles, so it's got a like, square profile. So that's quite a long one. That's a different partner with this one. This is a shorter one, same four leg profile, yep. And we've got more LEDs. So we've got two different types of LEDs, because I wasn't quite sure which one I need. But I've got to do some repairs on a couple of things, and I'll show you what they are. You go grab them. So first thing I've got is this timer interface here. You would have seen me playing around with these previously in my project. This isn't the one I've been using, it's a different one. This belongs to a club, but I was happened to see it was broken the other day when I was at, at an event. And what's happened is the antenna's been broken off. I think they dropped it or something like that. So here's the connector. It's an RPSMA. It's supposed to be a pin inside here, and there isn't one. It's gone. So there's the antenna connection was supposed to be on there. So that has been ripped out. So that's what I need these for. So hopefully this one here is the right size. It looks exactly correct. That looks fine. So that will be the one I use to replace this one. And the other thing I need is these infrared LEDs. Now the problem is I don't actually know what frequency these are. I don't know the wavelength. So that's a bit of a, a gamble in my part there. So this is a light pole. This is a light curtain. It's one of them. There's actually a pair. Yeah, you know, try and get a shot. Okay, there's two of these. This, this one's a sender because it's got a black top. The red top one is the receiver, which has got infrared sensors in it. All right, so this has got infrared LEDs in each of these little indicator lights here. This top one here is not working. So I don't know what the wavelength is though. So I don't actually know which type of LED to put in because there's different wavelengths and in order for it to work it has to be the correct one. I have ordered a piece of test gear 
from China which does give you wavelength measurements when it's sensing so I'm hoping that will actually tell me anyway I'll be hoping I can use that so I've got two different kind of wavelengths of LEDs in here so I'll just try one which is the most common first which is I've forgotten <laughs> Eight, is it 840 or is it 950 or something like that? Anyway, so I've got two different wavelength ones. I'll try the most common one first and see if that works. If it does, then great. If it doesn't, I'll swap it over to the other one and try that one. It's a process of elimination because I've got no information about what these are supposed to be. I just got asked to look at this. This is a different one. This is for a different club. This is for one club and that's for a different club. Now this particular unit, actually, this has had a really hard life. Look at the display on that thing. It's had water go in it and it's a bit mouldy inside the back there and it's got some LCD crystal there showing up because it was actually pressing against the casing. The casing was pressing against the display. You put any, if you touched it, the display would all change. So I've actually fixed that now. I've spaced it off for a little bit inside the case. I'll make sure when I put it back together I'll do the same thing again, but it's already done damage to it, so it's, like, it's probably a bit late. But it's had a hard life as an old unit. So there'll be repair videos on this thing here and on this thing here. So watch out for those if you're interested. See what's in here. This feels fairly heavy, it's interesting. What is this? Not to unwrap it. Ah, it's, ow, that nearly hurt. <laughs> it's some big magnets. Some big neodymium magnets. Let's find out how strong these things are. Let's try, well, they've got spaces in between them. Yeah, okay, and that is still hard to get off even with the spacer. <laughs> right, let's find something. Let's try a screwdriver. Yep, that's fairly impressive, isn't it? Now, the reason I got these, as dangerous as they are for pinching your fingers, because it's been summer here and it's been really hot. Someone actually gave us a special, like, um, fetive tarpaulin, I suppose. It's like a silver tarpaulin. It's, it's got air gaps through it and everything like that. It's like a mesh. But it reflects a lot of sun. A lot of people use them on their vehicles. And because I'm on a mat. Um, we need to kind of put that over, but we need something to hold it onto the bodywork. So I thought, well, I'll get some decent sized magnets and that'll hold it down. So even when it's really windy, it should still be fine. And being quite a large area, um, they should um, spread the loading a little bit and hopefully not scratch the paint, that sort of stuff. So, well, those are lethal. <laughs> watch your fingers. So if you get these things, watch out what your fingers are doing because. They will hurt you. I'm just glad it didn't get any bigger than that. I thought these would be pretty powerful. And yeah, they certainly are. That is um, a bit of a mission, actually. I think there's supposed to be like a washer between them as well, maybe. Just like... There we go. All right. And I can probably get this one off. Again, that is pretty strong. Very impressive. There's something that's got almost no steel on it. And yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Still got a few items left to go through yet, including one big package, and I'm not sure what's in that one yet. Oh dear, I'm making a mess of this. Let's try this again. Let's do it this side. Oh look, switches have arrived. 20 pieces of... It's upside down, but 4.3 to 13 mil. That's the height. So, I showed you other ones before. These ones here, which are 22. And the height is actually from the base of the switch to the tip of the switch. Let's get some tweezers and grab one. So the height is measured from here to here. At the end there. So from there to there. So in case you need to know for sizing stuff. But these aren't long enough. These are um, some of the ones I ordered. I ordered a whole bunch of different sizes. As you can see it's an assortment which is great to have. But I also ordered some 18s I think. I end up getting some locally quite quickly, thankfully. But yeah, I've got a range of them now, so I'm, I'm fine. So here, this is something about ESP32s. Hmm. Not sure about the protection of that envelope, anyway. Are these the correct ones? They look correct. 3.3 volt. And that should be 23. That is D23. Yep, these are the right ones. So that's good. I don't have an issue where I bought some of the wrong ones, which I've got a box full over here. Hold on, let's try and get it, it's 10 minutes of wires. I've got a box of the wrong ones over here, which are longer, 
these still work fine, but they've got some extra pins on them and these that actually fit the projects I'm building. So I've used a foot certain size footprint, so you can see there's a difference in length there. Hope you can see it. It's not great with the packaging. Alright, so this one's bigger, it's got extra pins. Which most of which you can't use anyway. So I know these are the ones I need. So I've got a bunch of these now, so I think I've got enough. I like to have some spare ones as well, so I can have them pre-programmed ready to go. So if something goes wrong with a unit and the field, I'll just pull it apart, chop in your module and carry on. Yeah, anyway. I've got a few in a box already. I might be able to shove them in there. Mm -hmm. And the last thing. Another big box. I've got no idea what's in here. Mind you, it's probably true for just about everything I get. This is why Dave has a massive knife. I decided to ram it. Yes, I know, it's a bad pun. Oh, interesting. It's got these little corner pieces in here to protect it. Oh, that's cool. I've never seen those being used before. This is a place which obviously cares about getting your thing to you without being broken. It's got the same in the bottom as well. Nice. That could be handy for something else. So I've shown this previously. I've got some more. These are these little cases. I showed you earlier in the video actually. I showed you the final version, the actual finished unit with the antenna on the back, which I showed at the very beginning. Um, this is obviously the case for it. So, a bunch of those. These are really nice cases. They're fairly expensive. They're, they're fairly expensive, anyway. They're much more expensive than you normally expect to pay for stuff in China. But the quality is really good. I'm really happy with them. And they're perfect for what I need. So I'm having to pay the extra cost, but that's fine. Make sure you click the bell icon, subscribe, and click like as well. Give us a like. Watch out for the repair videos of these things I've got to fix. I've got, I'm going to be doing more repair videos, okay? So my barrel bag stuff is winding down, much to some people's delight I'm expecting. I'm still going to be doing mail bags, but I've got less stuff coming at the moment. So I might even miss a few weeks of mail bag. Might be, I might miss a week and the second week I'll do a mail bag. But I want to get back into doing repair stuff. And that's really what my channel's about anyway, is fixing things. So I want to try and get back into doing that but I've been so busy with my project and some other stuff around the house and trying to catch up with stuff and oh, it's just been so full on trying to find the time to do it it's been a nightmare projects you know me building things and me fixing things are on the cards mail bags will still be happening just um I'll be trying to get other stuff done too you know back to my roots as it were so everyone that wants to repair videos and things like that they're they're coming I just need to get the time to do them with less mail bag to do and less other stuff around the house we're catching up with the things i've got to do then um, i can get onto it so yay so thanks for watching catch you next time and um yeah i'll see you next video bye I think it's a bit equivalent value to the thing I gave away to my supporters, to my to, um, equivalent of it. Uh, uh. That, yeah, that's pretty strong.